under vascular emergencies we were discussing about acute limb ischemia during our first uh, previous presentation uh, and uh, just to go back uh, we took it as a presentation of a who presents with a acute onset severe leg pain and uh, we discuss the differential diagnosis and one of which is acute limb ischemia and how to differentiate it from the other causes and then the causes of acute uh, limb ischemia we discuss embolism and thrombosis during our la next last discussion and now we will proceed with the other two what compart syndrome and then about vascular injury now compartment syndrome uh, happens when there is build up of tissue pressure in a tight compartment more, more, more often we see this in the lower limb but it can also like have even happen in the abdomen even the abdomen is this is not a very tight compartment but when the volume increases too much even the abdominal uh, pressures can go up and can cause compartment syndrome upper limb also it may happen under the deep fascia we discuss initially about the head uh, the, the uh, intracranium even though we don't talk strictly as a compartment syndrome a slight increase of pressure more than in other compartments shoots up the uh, intracranial pressure because it's a very rigid compartment in which but anyway coming back to the lower limb compartment syndrome can happen one thing is by external compression like a tight plaster cast so after fracture your plaster cast this can happen in the upper limb also if there's undue pain which is not explained because after plaster cast actually the pain or the fracture should go down due to immobilization but if there's undue pain it's very important that uh, to consider this and uh, immediately bivalve the plaster and, and remove then the other categories build up of compartment pressure within the compartment due to some increase of the volume uh, and often it follows trauma and it may be due to uh, bleeding or other forms of injury soft tissue or bone injury and also deep infections can cause increase of the compartment pressure which causes a compartment syndrome and uh, the diagnosis of course it's very important to be suspicious all these conditions that we listed earlier anyway they will have pain within the compartment but of course if there is very severe pain undue pain and also with the, the compartment being swollen and also it will be tender it is very important to be suspicious of compartment syndrome now what about the distal pulse is it palpable or or uh, or is it not an important physical sign to diagnose compartment syndrome now to answer that question at what pressure does compartment syndrome begin to what level the tissue pressure should be increased to cause the compartment syndrome it is just above the capillary perfusion pressure so when the pressure is just about 25 30 millimeters of mercury in the tissue then compartment syndrome sets in because uh, even though the, there's flow through the capillaries capillaries can't perfuse the uh, perfuse to the tissues against this increased pressure so just at 25 30 the distal pulse is going to be going to be palpable so distal pulse is not a diagnostic criterion to uh, diagnose compartment syndrome there's one exception to this which i'll discuss later but generally this is the thing that you have to remember if a uh, limb is uh, swollen and tender there's undue pain uh, you, and if pulse is not a physical sign you have to depend on because just as at about 25 30 pressure you can get the compartment syndrome and set in tissue ischemia and there will be muscle necrosis if you don't treat soon and confirmation you can measure the tissue pressures which is not available in most of hospitals so on clinical suspicion you have to treat without delay and which is for doing a fasciotomy you make two incision on either side of the leg and uh, 
divide the deep fascia and let the tissue pressure off and you can save the limb. So that is about the compartment syndrome. The external compression is one where again you when it is suspicious always you have to remove the external plaster cast and then the other forms of uh, compartment syndrome at suspicion do not delay to your fascia trauma and the last form of uh, the acute limb ischemia vascular injury so look at this scenario a young male brought after a motorcycle accident so as they come, of course you check the airway, he was talking, so the airway was okay, and he had a tachypnea. So what is the action? What is the action? It is tachypnea. Start oxygen by mask and do a complete respiratory system examination to exclude a cause for tachypnea within the lungs, especially a pneumothorax or a pneumothorax or a combination, or it may be other things like play chest or lung contusion. So this person respiratory system examination is normal. So it is not a, the tachypnea is not due to a problem happening in the in the uh, uh, breathing. So then the most likely cause is that person could be in from some form of a hypotension which causes uh, the hypoxia and uh, the fast breathing. So then next step you get on to the circulation and, and of course, there is a tachycardia and the BP is not very low, but of course, in a young male, it may be lower than what it was. But anyway, this shows the compensatory action of our hypotension. And of course, we have to start on some form of fluid resuscitation. And it is important to see uh, what is the source of the source of bleeding. So once you have finished A, B, C, D, you take a disability, the coma scale, and it was 15 by 15 for him and then exposure and then get on to secondary survey to look uh, at all the injuries that he has sustained uh, and especially to look for a cause of bleeding. So he uh, underwent a examination from head to toe, it was normal, chest again re-examine, no evidence of bleeding, upper limbs are normal, the abdomen pelvis they were normal the soft non abdomen and there was no pelvic tenderness but the right thigh was swollen and tender and the foot external rotated so what is the possible clinical diagnosis what do you think so it's like to be a fracture femur so with the fracture femur of course you will have to immobilize but but it's very important that you check the distal pulses because fracture femur can be associated with the damage to the superficial femoral artery and also any injury proximally not even in this case whatever form of trauma with a fracture or stab injury any proximal injury do not forget to examine the distal pulses and also the function of the nerves and the tendons is very important so that you don't miss an injury so this person uh, when it was examined the pulses were absent the distal pulses were absent so absent distal pulses is known as a hard sign of vascular injury. That is, if the pulses are absent distally with the proximal injury, there's no question. It's unequivocal evidence of a vascular injury. So the action, of course, to confirm, you may do a duplex, but actually there is no point time take wasting time on this because this is clear cut vascular damage, and we are fully warranted of uh, doing. Uh, whatever surgery, surgical repair uh, when a hard sign of vascular injury is there. So when we say absent distal pulse is a hard sign that means there are what are called soft signs of vascular injury also which I'll discuss a little later. So in this patient the action is of course you have to get an x-ray to confirm the, that there's a fracture and then of course you have to do the vascular repair. So the vascular repair, it may be a direct anastomosis, but it's very important that it has to be tension free. So uh, because sometimes when the vessel is damaged, you may have to trim a little bit of bruised vessel. Otherwise, if you anastomose a bit of a diseased vessel, it can thrombose. So when you fashion it, 
if the gap is more than 2 cm, very unlikely that you can do a tension free anastomosis, in which case you take a saphenous venous uh, graft. And in the stroma situation, you do, don't use artificial grafts because of the risk of infection. So in trauma setting, always use a saphenous graft. And from what limb? It is usually taken from the opposite limb. What is the reason? Pause the video and think what is the reason why you take from the opposite leg. Why can't you take from the same leg? Because already you have exposed to the incision for the exposure of the fracture. Easily from the same incision, you can take a piece of saphenous graft because you will be exposing on the medial side. Simply you can get and, and I'm sure you know that in uh, the uh, vascular bypasses of hemorrhopopli tail we are using a vein you take from the same leg but in trauma you take from the opposite leg because when the, uh, the superficial femoral artery is damaged the vein there's a high chance it can be damaged which may need repair or it may have some contusion so it's a bit of risk of developing deep vein thrombosis so therefore you don't want to take the superficial vein out and therefore traditionally it is taken from the opposite limb uh, why I say traditionally is of course the theory, these are, these are the theoretical practical I think there are a lot of superficial venous channels but still uh, for the best for the patient still the practice is that it is taken from the opposite limb so the important is that you have to explain the patient before the, the patient is taken to the theater that the other leg will be operated otherwise they may think that you by mistake that you have opened the other limb it's very important to get consent to open the other leg absolutely necessary and also you have to prepare the leg uh, at the time of anesthesia the opposite leg also has to be prepared uh, to obtain the venous graft and also the one point of interest that now this is associated with the fracture femur and the fracture has to be rigidly fixed either internal fixation but if it is an open fracture or external fixator and what will you do first will you do the vascular repair first or the fracture fixation first so pause the video again and uh, think for a while so I am sure you agree that you do the fracture fixation first even though it will delay the vascular repair to, us, to some time because if now with a uh, to fix the fracture there has to be fair amount of mobile the, the fracture ends up has to be sort of handled vigorously and if you do, do the vascular repair first and do this all pulling and pushing your vascular repair can get damaged so you do the uh, bone fixation first a rigid bone fixation either internal fixation or external fixation and then do the vascular repair now what I will do if there's a delay in presentation, this is often what happens in a hospital due to transfer time and many things, often they are delayed. So ideally the vascular repair should be done uh, before six hours. The pr problem of doing uh, delayed reconstruction is now when uh, with a vascular injury, the distal compartment, now the superficial femoral is occluded and your calf and the below parts are ischemic and there's a lot of uh, anaerobic metabolism which causes toxic metabolites and these after revascularization will get into the systemic circulation causing reperfusion injury which can affect the the, the uh, myocardium uh, the lungs and also can go into renal failure so the reperfusion injury so it's very important that uh, when you are doing a delayed vascular repair uh, to face this problem and also now when it is delayed your the distal muscles will get start getting necrosed uh, and that also will cause add lot of toxins to the blood after reperfusion and also the distal compartment will have a secondary compartment syndrome because of all these metabolites there will be fair amount of inflammation settling in, in and there will be also a compartment syndrome. So now in this case of compartment syndrome the distal pulse is absent not because of the compartment syndrome but it is due to the proximal vascular injury. So this is a special situation of compartment syndrome which I mentioned earlier. So now in a delayed uh, 
presentation, the problems you face is that, that there will be the risk of reperfusion injury and also the muscles may be already dead uh, and there may be no point of revascularizing and also uh, which can cause a significant reperfusion injury and also that there is a, a possible distal compartment syndrome which also has to be treated because if you don't attend to that simply doing the vascular repair reperfusion still uh, the muscles even though they are still viable due to the distal compartment syndrome which has already built the muscle may get a secondary damage and then all your effort is going to be waste. So how are you going to face this problem in a delayed vascular presentation? Are you going to take, take the risk of reperfusion and revascularize or do a primary amputation? It's a very difficult decision to make. So the best to do is to initially perform a fasciotomy because this is part of the treatment anyway. Because I said there will be, there can be a distal secondary compartment setting in. So this will also be anyway a required part of treatment. And you do the fasciotomy and look at whether the muscles are viable. If they are viable, go ahead with the, re, the uh, vascular repair. But, but be ready to face the reperfusion injury. You have to hydrate the patient where you make cause a uh, diuresis, observing the ICU, give oxygen. There may be a lot of support. So, uh, so, if the muscles are viable, you do this, but if they are not viable, of course, it's much better to do a primary amputation after clearly explaining the patient. So, to summarize, we started uh, talking of uh, vascular emergencies and I said it could be arterial, venous and also compartment syndrome. And this can happen in any part of the body and as a common area, I took the lower limb uh, as acute limb ischemia uh, and then uh, I took it as the presentation acute limb pain and other differential diagnosis and how to, uh, how to rule out other causes like trauma or infection. And then the causes of acute limb ischemia, thrombosis and embolism, how to distinguish between each other and what is the treatment, then compartment syndrome and then vascular injury. So we have covered all these uh, cases of uh, acute limb ischemia. So vascular emergencies, if you are talking vascular emergencies of the lower limb, so this is one, acute limb ischemia due to thrombosis, embolism then compartment syndrome, vascular injury. Then the other forms of, if you are talking a broad manner, vascular, vascular emergencies of lower limb, the other thing is bleeding with or without distal ischemia, so that you have to handle. Then the venous problems like deep vein thrombosis and varicose vein bleeding, they are also part of vascular injuries, the total picture. But I have here discussed uh, only the, the ischemic part the four causes and the deep end thrombosis and uh, the uh, venous problems we can discuss on a, another session. And if there are any uh, questions that uh, you have on this, okay, you can email to me on to this address.